the topic is Sola Scriptura. This was a doctrine that was given that label by the reformers coming out of Roman paganism. Um, but as I read with Kelvi the other night, Boethius and Irenaeus had uh, Sola Scriptura language in their writings uh, early on, within the first few centuries of Christianity. They didn't call it script, uh, Sola Scriptura, but they said that Scripture is sufficient, which is you know pretty much saying the same thing. So yeah, <clears throat> so is Sola Scriptura important? And what is Sola Scriptura? So Sola Scriptura is the doctrine that Scripture alone is all we need for everything that's related to God. Uh, for instruction, teaching, um, doctrines, <clears throat> Scripture alone is sufficient. Amen and amen. And look at, there we go, brother in the house, Sola Scriptura 21. What's good, my brother? What's up, man? Yo, what's up, Doki Doki Bible Club in the house? <laughs> hey. Yeah, we just starting to rock and roll, fellas. Like, share, and subscribe, please. Thank you very much. All right, so I want to start us off here in the book of Matthew. Um, so the Pharisees would often accuse Jesus of things, or they'd find, try to find ways to trap him. They would constantly be coming after him all the time. In Matthew 15, 2, <clears throat> they said, Why do your disciples transgress their traditions of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But Jesus answered them, he said, why do you transgress the commandments of God by your tradition? See, for your, for God commanded saying, honor your mother and your father. And he that curses father and mother, let him die the death. But all of you say, the Pharisees, whosoever shall say to his father or his mother is a gift by whatsoever thou mayest be profited by me. And honors not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus you all made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. You all are hypocrites. Well did Isaiah prophesy of you. This people draw nigh to me with their mouth and with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain they do worship me. Teaching for doctrines and commandments of men. So I want to pause for a second here. Now, this doctrine, which is, you know, Sola Scriptura, is, it, it is biblical. We're going to get in some verses here to talk about the sufficiency of Scripture. This same issue is going on today. If Jesus was walking around on the earth today, he would have the same exact issue with the Jehovah's Witnesses, with the Mormons, with, and the, with the Roman Catholics. Because they all hold tradition and equal with scripture. And sometimes the, the scripture or um, the tradition takes authority over the scripture. Or if there is a tradition that's questionable, like that doesn't line up with the Bible, the tradition comes first in the case of the Watchtower, Track Society, Jehovah's Witnesses. They tell you what good works you need, things you have to do to inherit the kingdom of God, and those are the good works you do to save yourself. Okay, and, and, and guess what? The things they tell them they have to do, not mentioned in Scripture. Roman Catholics, it's the same thing. Nowhere in Scripture does it tell you to pray to Mary, um, you know, Hail Mary, full of grace, and not blah, 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 praying to dead people. Nowhere in Scripture does it talk about traditions such as purgatory, in fact, their whole system, uh, calling spiritual successors father. Uh, the Bible actually tells us to call no man thy father, speaking of spiritual father. But they have no problem calling their priest, which isn't a priest, by the way, because a priest uh, had to be from the tribe of Levi. Uh, these people aren't Jews, and the, the old covenant is, is, is done. It's fulfilled in Christ. There are, there are no priests today. We have one priest today. He is our great high priest, and he's not after the Levitical priesthood. He's after the priesthood of Melchizedek, and his name is Jesus Christ. Okay, we don't have priests today. These people are absolute insane. In, in, insane. This is just paganism. <clears throat> so by their traditions, 
They transgress the commandments, the things that God is, has written down in Scripture. The things that God gave us are contradicted by these traditions of men. And the Roman Catholics are just as guilty of this <clears throat> as the, uh, the Pharisees. Yeah, for teaching the doctrines and commandments of men. Howbeit in vain they do worship me, teaching the doctrines and the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, you all hold the traditions of men. All you Roman papists, where in the Bible did God tell us that he was going to have a one man, an official vigor of Christ on earth, and when he says something that is considered like scripture, you follow exactly what he says, and when he passes away, he has a successor. Where are we commanded that? Where do we see the Pope in the scripture? You don't. That's a man-made, ungodly, pagan tradition. It's disgusting. You hold to the traditions of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other such things you all do. And he said to them, Fool, well, you all reject the commandment of God. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy. Yeah, we see a lot of philosophy going on. Vain deceit and the tradition of men after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Not after Christ. These people are so obsessed with traditions and um, appearances and the opinions of other people. It doesn't matter what God has to say. No, no, I have to look the part. I have to look clean. And inside they are dead and decayed, rotting, corrupt. What's up, Damon? Good to see you. Good to see you. Welcome to the channel. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna, which thou knowest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee known that man doth not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Deuteronomy 8.3. And Jesus quotes this um, in the New Testament. Here we go. Mar uh, Matthew 4.4. 4. Jesus says it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So he's saying that man lives by every word of God. Notice how he didn't mention traditions. No, life, word of God. Live, word of God. That's it. Jesus answers saying, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. 2 Timothy 3.16, here's a really good one. All scripture is given by inspiration of God, which means it's God breathed, inspired, you know, breathing, inspire, inhale, exhale, inspiration. Inspiration of God and is profitable, well, it's profitable for what? Doctrine, which means teaching. There's teachings. There's teachings. This has teachings for reproof. What's it mean to reprove someone? Well, rebuke, correct, disciple. For correction and instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, is the word there, the King James says perfect, but it means complete, thoroughly equipped unto all good works. So hang on, hang on. So verse 17 is telling us that scripture is sufficient for teaching, correction, instruction, reproof, that we may be thoroughly equipped and complete to all good works. So if we are complete, why do we need tradition? If the word of God is enough for us to be complete, why do we need tradition? You don't. It's nowhere. Nowhere. So you got the Roman pagans adding their traditions. You got the Mormons adding their traditions. You got the JWs adding their traditions. All these pagans do it. The Bible says that the word of God is enough. Amen, Richard. The grass withers. The flowers fade, but the word of God shall stand forever. 
Amen. Amen. Another strong proof for Sola Scriptura is in the temptation of Jesus. So here we have Luke chapter 4. Notice what Jesus does. Verse 1, And Jesus, being full of the Holy Spirit, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit until the wilderness, being forty days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said to him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that be made bread. Listen to how Jesus responds. And Jesus answered and said, It is written. He pointed to Scripture. That man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the devil, taking him up to a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, All this power I will give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whoever I will give it. If thou therefore will worship me, all shall be yours. Jesus answered and said to him, Get behind me, Satan, for it is written. A second time, Jesus points to scripture. He doesn't go to a tradition or a church authority. He, he points Satan to scripture. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him thou shalt serve only. And he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest any time thou shalt dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus answered, said to him, It is said that thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. But you notice twice Jesus pointed the devil to Scripture. When he was under spiritual attack, he didn't go to church tradition, uh, tradition or church authority or, you know, a pope. He pointed him to Scripture. Sola Scriptura. Scripture alone is sufficient for everything that I've said already. And Scripture is sufficient to fight off temptation. Hey, Graham, what's up? Good eye. <laughs> Good eye. <laughs> they love and you been like, going for 30 minutes. Uh, 31 minutes, yeah. Yeah. So what have you done so far? Um, I went over Jesus rebuking the Pharisees for their traditions in Matthew 5, uh, starting at verse 2. And then I went over to Book of Mark, chapter 7, Colossians 2, uh, Deuteronomy 8, and then ended it with 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. Hang on, did you say Matthew 5? Um, yeah, um... No, Matthew 15. Matthew Sorry. 15, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yep, traditions of men. Did you have anything to, else to add to that? Um, so did you do First Peter chapter 1? We have a no. more sure word of prophecy. No, we can do, we can do that. All right, let's do that. Yeah, yeah. Just driving in the car, so I can't bring it up. I got it. About verse nineteen, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it's second oh, yeah, there. yeah Sorry, there you go. Second picture. You sure it's not there? Oh well, yeah, I didn't see it. There you go. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh. Right, I guess I'll start from verse sixteen. For we have not followed cunning, uh, followed cunningly devised fables, when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we are eyewitnesses of His Majesty. For he had received from God the Father honor and glory. When there came such a voice to him, the exceeding glory, the excellent glory, excellent glory, sorry, I'm an idiot. This is my beloved son in whom I'm ple well pleased. And his voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him at the holy mountain. We have also a more sure word of prophecy whereunto you all do well that you take heed, as unto a light shineth in dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts, 
knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is given of any proper uh, private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. All right, so what was the point you wanted to make in verse 19? So, sola scriptura is the idea, and I don't know what you've said so far, but sola scriptura is that we do not need anything more than scripture. The Bible is our sufficient revelation. Um, there are many people today that they want to add things to it. The Pentecostals like to add God speaking directly to people. Um, the Roman Catholics add the traditions of the church and the authority of the church. Um, but here we have God had spoken to Peter on the Mount of Transfiguration. That's what's being referred to from verses 16 to 18. Is that they heard a voice from heaven. They, they weren't following cunningly devised fables. They had heard from God directly. Um, and then Peter goes on and says, but we have a more sure word of prophecy, more sure than God speaking directly is the written scriptures. What God has revealed to us in his word, what he has written down is more sure than God speaking directly to people. And so we shouldn't look for anything else. Why would we look for anything else? Scripture is sufficient. We don't need anything more than Scripture. Scripture.